Hey guys welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto had demonic dire wolf summing and chunin exam. This is part 2, and if you like this video please make sure to hit me, I mean hit that like button and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Izun held up a stopwatch for the four in front of her to see, ready everyone? She asked. Naruto nodded as he lifted his hands to form a basic hand seal, ready me chan. He exclaimed. Sasuke formed the same seal and merely nodded. Shino merely lifted his hands out of his jacket pockets. Anata formed two hand seals before holding a third. Oh? Shizun exclaimed as she clicked the button on top of the watch. Substitution Jutsu. All four academy students disappeared in a puff of smoke, replacing themselves with a log, before they all jumped into the clearing again while forming hand seals. Transformation Judo. After another puff of smoke, Shizun was surrounded by four copies of her, Shizun looked over all of them with a sharp eye for a full second before nodding, allowing the three of them to form hand seals once more. Clone Jutsu. Insect Clone Jutsu. Shizun nodded as Sasuke, Hinata, and Shino's clones popped into existence, though she frowned at the seven dud clones that Naruto barely managed to produce, the four hesitated for a moment, don't stop. Keep going. Shizun ordered. The four moved a few steps closer to Shizun to stop next to each of their individual ink pots, quickly kneeling to write out the storage seal. In 15 seconds, Naruto finished his seal and seal said ink pot into it. In 27 seconds, Hinata finished with Sasuke only a few seconds behind her. Shino was the last to finish at 40 seconds exactly. The moment Shino finished, he stood up, that being the signal that they all begun an ninjutsu to show their use of an alternate chakra type. Shino's was the fastest to activate considering his bug clone just lost its form and flew back into Shino's body. Anata made a single-handed seal, by Akugan. She exclaimed, showing her bloodline as an alternate. Sasuke was the first one to turn away from the group as he formed a quick series of well-practiced hand seals, fire style. Fireball Jutsu. Naruto turned as well, his cheeks bulging as he felt the chakra build up in his throat, ninja art. Poison Fog Jutsu. Flick. The academy kids turned to a smiling Shizun, in total, 78 seconds. Shizun said before showing them the face of the watch, yeah I'd say you're ready. You guys are basically guaranteed to pass. She said to the group. Sasuke smirked confidently while Shino nodded. Though Hinata looked over worriedly at Naruto, who was looking over at the only deformed clone that still was in existence, Naruto-kun still can't do the clones. What do we do? She thought, hoping to find a way to help her new friend in some way. Shizun pocketed the stopwatch, okay guys. That covers all the academy stuff I think, you looking forward to the first tests tomorrow? She asked. Sasuke raised a brow, it's only the written tests. He said. Shino nodded in agreement, it would be quite shocking that we'd be looking forward to a test. Why? Because it's a seemingly unnecessary challenge that we've taken part in hundreds of times in the academy. He explained. Shizun just smiled at the boy, what am I supposed to say to that? She thought before waving it off, my, you know what I mean. Good luck tomorrow and maybe I'll see you when you're all genin. She asked hopefully. Sasuke and Hinata instantly nodded while Shino tilted his head, it would be unlikely, as you are a Takibetsu jonin, the odds of working together is minimal at this point in time. Shino said calmly. Shizun just sighed and decided to annoy Shino by hugging him to shut him up, okay Shino-kun. She said as she shut him up by shoving his face into her chest, it worked. Sasuke bowed politely, thanks sensei. Sasuke said simply before he began to walk off home. Shizun frowned as she placed Shino back on his feet, causing the bug user's eyebrows to stay in a permanent furrow as he began to march off after Sasuke. Shizun turned to Hinata only to see her still watching Naruto and that he had only just managed to focus enough to dispel the illusion that was the clone, causing him to sigh before he turned back, seeing Hinata and Shizun watching him, what? He asked before smiling and pretending there was nothing wrong. Hinata shook her head and nothing. I was just um, she paused for a moment before nodding in the general direction his clones were in, wondering how much progress you've made W with your backup plan. She asked quietly. Shizun smiled softly at that while Naruto grinned, yeah. Kasan is gonna get me started tomorrow afternoon on this other clone thing. I'll be ready for the practical exam in three days, believe it. He promised with a smile so wide that his eyes were forced shut. Shizun's gaze suddenly turned to a glare, Naruto. She exclaimed. Hinata and Naruto both jumped at her shout, making his smile fade as he saw Shizun's angry and hurt gaze, Naruto looked down at his feet, sorry Nichan. He said softly. Shizun smiled and walked over to Naruto, hugging him softly, it's okay Naruto, just stop doing that please. You don't need to hide yourself from your friends, and you promised you'd never hide behind that mask around soon a day summer me. She said softly. Hinata blinked in confusion, Ayano, what's wrong? She asked timidly. 
Naruto stepped away from Shizun and shook his head, and nothing really Hinata, I just um, just a moment of weakness on my part. Naruto said with a small but very much real smile. Hinata smiled too and nodded. Hinata-sama. The three of them turned to see someone who was obviously a Hayuga, Kenta-san. Hinata said with a polite bow. Kenta smiled softly, very much grateful for the timid and now worn out Hinata, Hiyashi-sama was expecting you to be home nearly an hour ago. He lied. Hinata paled drastically, ww what? She asked before she looked to Shizun, I I have to go sensei, Naruto-kun. She said before running off, Kenta staying in her shadow as they sprinted towards the back gate of the new Senju complex. Naruto watched on with an odd foreboding feeling as she disappeared, get home safely Hinata-chan. Naruto thought to himself before looking up at Shizun, sorry about before Ni-chan, I still get nervous, and it just happens I guess. He said with a shrug. Shizun sighed, well, you know what your punishment is. She said with a smile as she folded her arms. Naruto groaned, but I don't want to bathe Tauntin. Good night Naruto-kun, you don't have to wait up for Tsunade-sama you know. Shizun said with her head sticking out Naruto's balcony door. The little blonde looked up at her and smiled, I know, but I want to, he said before sinking further into his chair, it's nice here too. He said absent-mindedly. Shizun smiled at him, sometimes he acts so much older than he is. She thought as he turned and smiled to her again. Night Ni-chan. Night Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled politely as Shizun walked away, though the moment she closed the door behind her, Naruto's expression became one of intense focus as he looked at the Hokage monument again, Shizuichi. Naruto thought as he closed his normal eye, his Sharingan morphing slowly as he began to pant heavily. Flashback. It really is cool you know. I said as I turned to my friend. Itachi merely nodded, you just want your face on the mountainside. I don't see why, being Hokage means you're mostly stuck in that office doing paperwork. I couldn't hold back my laugh at that, come on Itachi, I know you're still a kid, but you're way smarter than that. Itachi looked at me with a blank expression, then his brow furrowed, seriously? You don't get it. I couldn't believe it. Itachi just raised a brow at me, dude, out of everyone I thought you would have known, I started before feeling that this was quite important. I leaned closer to ensure he was actually focused on me, to become Hokage, you have to be the fastest, the strongest and above all, the most giving. I told him. Itachi looked forward at the Hokage monument, the most giving. I don't understand. He said simply. I couldn't hold in my sigh, Itachi, what are you willing to give for this village? I asked him. Something in him changed. I saw it, I felt it. He looked exactly the same, but his aura was different, his presence was different. This is what he was like before they pulled him out of the Anbu program. I would give my life and as many of the enemies as necessary to ensure Kanahagakur will stay peaceful. Shit, I believed him. Naruto gasped as his manjikyu faded back to a normal Sharingan, causing him to put a hand over his eye in pain, this Shisui was an interesting guy. And to think he knew Sasuke and Itachi too. Naruto thought to himself as he closed his Sharingan eye. Have fun with that. Naruto looked to his right to see a tired looking Tsunade had at some point sat next to him and poured her own drink from his bottle, not really Kasan, it hurts when I activate the next stage, but as long as I don't try any special stuff with it, it won't stop working for me right? Naruto asked. Tsunade sighed, well, basically yes, but there's so much more to it than that Naruto-chan. She said tiredly as she slumped further into the chair. Naruto tilted his head as he sat up and looked at her, Kasan, what's with all the blood? He asked. Tsunade looked down at her shirt and closed her eyes to suppress the urge to throw up, just as I was leaving work. She glanced at Naruto, a young girl came in with a cut that traveled from just below her jugular to the top of her pelvic region. There was also large amounts of bruising all over the body. It was rough. She said with a shake of her head. Naruto scowled as his fists clenched, damn it. Naruto muttered angrily. Tsunade shook her head, yeah, it was pretty brutal. She said with a sigh. Naruto felt the tears form in his eyes before he could do anything about it. He wiped his eyes clear as he glared off to the side, when you say. Pelvic region. Naruto said as her words began to click in his mind. Tsunade just nodded, yeah, exactly what you think. This is one of the reasons I hate ninjas sometimes, they just use their power to get what they want, regardless of the consequences. She said with a scowl. Naruto pouted, sad that his mother had to go through seeing all that she had, but even more sad for the people that had already suffered. He looked around, trying to gain inspiration for a subject change before he suddenly remembered something, really sorry to hear the Kasan, but I kinda have a problem to attend to, and I was hoping you'd be able to help me quickly. Naruto asked. Tsunade blinked tiredly, but smiled happily at the chance to help out, sure, what do you need? Tsunade asked as she placed her drink down, pulling herself up into a more comfortable position. 
Naruto smiled as he turned to Tsunade, will you know how Ruka-sensei said that I might have a chakra mutation from our bloodline. I was wondering how we can check, cause as much as I've read, I can't think of a way to activate it without knowing already what I'm trying to activate. Naruto said as he scratched the back of his head. Tsunade looked up and thought, good point, that is how they did it in the old days, but now if a person is good enough at being a medic, they know how to channel a patient's chakra into a physical state for analysis. Tsunade explained. Naruto's brow furrowed, a physical state. You mean like those chakra crystals? Naruto asked, remembering once when he observed Tsunade helping analyze one of the chakra poisons, one of the next generation of slugs had begun to excrete. She had extracted a purple cloud of chakra before it compressed into a tiny purple crystal, so that Tsunade could touch it. Then after chipping off a small chunk, Tsunade was able to analyze it under a proper microscope. Tsunade nodded, exactly like those chakra crystals, but while in the medical environment they're called. She asked, hoping Naruto would be able to answer. Naruto merely blinked with a sheepish smile, showing that he hadn't come across the term before. Tsunade smirked, gems, just gems. She explained. Naruto nodded as he recorded the words to memory, gems, huh. Naruto thought before holding a hand out to Tsunade, so, can you do mine and see if I have one? He asked. Tsunade tilted her head and thought, I can, but only if you apply for an in-village ninja medic license after you graduate. Tsunade offered. Naruto frowned, knowing that before he'd been complaining about how if he registered, they might start assigning him shifts in the hospital, but a part of his mind flashed to the girl that may have been assaulted, if it's to help people like her, people who really need it. Naruto thought as he looked up to meet his mother's eyes with a nod, yeah, I'll register as a medic nin. Naruto promised. Tsunade tilted her head as she looked at the determination in Naruto's eyes, and his outstretched hand, she smiled as she sent chakra to her pointer finger, and took Naruto's hand into her own, here we go, just sent some chakra into your hand. She said as she put her pointer finger in the middle of Naruto's palm. Naruto's face twitched at the small sting of pain, but he continued channeling chakra to his palm, before Tsunade pressed her finger a little harder, ow. Naruto exclaimed as he pulled his hand back in slight pain, the wound glowing green, as he channeled his already stored medical chakra to the wound. Perfect. Tsunade said as she held up a small crystal into the light on Naruto's balcony. Naruto looked up at the gem with a smile, cool, how long do you think it'll take to find out? Naruto asked. Tsunade casually dropped the gem into the valley of her breasts, causing Naruto to sigh, as he knew that meant he'd never get it back as she spoke, about a week, but forget about that. Tsunade said as she felt the dried blood move uncomfortably as it was soaked and now dried into her clothes. She held back some bile as she took a deep breath with her mouth, only to have a flash of the bloody academy girl she had looked after enter her mind, nope, I won't be sleeping tonight. Tsunade thought with a sigh before turning to Naruto and deciding to be productive, so Neru-chan, how about we get started on that clone technique tonight? She asked. Naruto grinned, we get to start early. Yes. Naruto asked in excitement, one more jutsu on my path to becoming genin. Naruto thought excitedly. Tsunade smiled softly as she watched Naruto look up at the Hokage Mountains with a grin. Her eyes grew soft as she looked at Minato's face, seeing the resemblance with Naruto when he had his genjutsu inactive. With it active, he basically looked like a mini male Tsunade. Tsunade's smile dropped as she stood, feeling the grind of dried blood in her clothes, meet you in the training room soon okay? I'm just gonna change clothes first she said before walking inside. Naruto nodded and sprung to his feet as he grabbed the leftover drinks and glasses from his balcony, bringing them inside and placing them on his bench for Tsubaki to grab for washing later, Kasan. Do I wear the restricting bracelet? He asked as she opened his door. Tsunade glanced over her shoulder at Naruto and shook her head, nah, this is like producing medical chakra, you'll need all the focus you can get initially, but once you get the hang of it, then you can try with the bracelet. Tsunade said as she stepped out. Naruto ran into his room to get ready for some late night training, though as he went to put on his training robe, he realized the time, oh yeah, I gotta take them off for the night now. Naruto mumbled to himself as he lifted his foot onto a chair. Naruto reached up his pants and undid two clasps, taking off the small set of weights from his first leg, before lifting up his other one and doing the same. Naruto stretched his legs out a couple of times before nodding to himself and stretching tall with a yawn. As he yawned, Naruto's mind flashed to the expression of sick disgust that Tsunade showed when she had looked down at the blood on her clothes, Ka-san will have nightmares again if she sleeps tonight he thought with a sad smile, but at least that means we get to train till tomorrow, our training nights always seem to cheer her up a little. Naruto thought before turning to his wardrobe. Pulling out his training robe, Naruto began to get changed as he thought about what the training would be like that night. Three days later. Naruto sat into his chair and leant back with a wide yawn before looking around the academy classroom, still no Hinata. 
Naruto thought in worry as he looked at the empty seat in front of him next to Shino. You think she'll make it? Naruto asked the person next to him. Sasuke seemed to snap back into focus as if he'd been daydreaming, HN. He asked with a raised brow. Naruto rolled his eyes, Hinata hasn't been to train with us for a few days, and she hasn't been here at the academy either, if she doesn't show up today, she won't even be able to get her ninja license. Naruto explained. Sasuke blinked before glancing at the empty chair and then looking towards the clock, if you really cared so much why don't you go check at her compound. We still have an hour until free period is up and the test begins. Sasuke suggested, not really believing that Naruto would. Naruto looked out the window as the same foreboding feeling from a few nights earlier set in, how come I feel like Hinata's been? I dunno, something. Naruto thought. At the sound of a chair scraping across the ground, the two looked forward to see Shino had stood up, unfortunately my curiosity and concern has overthrown my need to abide by the rules, Shino said calmly as he turned to Naruto, I will come with you, I know the way. Shino said before marching off towards the classroom door. Naruto blinked at Shino before standing and nodding, yeah, right behind you Shino. Naruto said as he quickly followed, the two boys leaving the room in a matter of seconds. Sasuke blinked as the two left before sighing as he was suddenly surrounded by the fangirls once more, damn. Sasuke thought with a sigh before trying to zone out, looking at the wall at the front of the classroom. Sasuke's eyes narrowed as he watched the second's hand on the clock face, causing Sasuke to scowl, that clock's frozen. He thought before realizing something, that means those two don't know. Shit, what time is it? Sasuke thought as he stood, looking around the room for another clock. Shino and Naruto jumped from building to building, moving as fast as they could towards the Hyuga complex. After a few minutes though, Shino glanced towards Naruto calmly, Naruto, I was curious as to why you find it important for Hinata to at least be there to try. As you have not known her long, it seems illogical for you to risk being late for the genin exam for her. Shino said, asking in his weird way. Naruto merely shrugged, it's my duty as a medical ninja to make sure my comrades are at top health, and how can I be expected to look after people in real life situations, if I don't even try? Naruto said before looking ahead and smiling slightly, besides, she's one of the first friends I've ever made, along with you and Sasuke Naruto said with a growing smile. Shino nodded in reply before turning to their right and making one last massive leap, you are the third human I could call. Friend. Shino said quietly, agreeing with Naruto's motives. Naruto nodded as the two came to a stop at the front of two large gates. Shino stepped forward and bowed politely, good morning, we are here to ensure Hinata makes it to the academy in time for the genin exams. Shino said without coming out from his bow. Naruto watched as both of the Hyuga guards looked at each other uncomfortably. There was a few moments of silence before the Hyuga on their left side welcomed Shino-san, but Hinata-sama went through some stuff a few days ago and has yet to recover mentally. Her father has said that none are to see her. He explained. Shino stood from his bow and then did nothing. Causing the Hyuga men to stare at him expectantly as he tried to calmly think of a way to get to Hinata. Can we leave a message for her then? The two Hyuga men and Shino turned to Naruto as he took a step forward, listen up, my name is Naruto Senju, and I need to tell her some things. If I write it down can you give her the message? Naruto asked. The men looked at each other for a moment and thought before the one who hadn't spoken yet nodded, I guess so. He muttered. Shino watched as Naruto reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out a notepad. He began writing on it as quick as he could before scribbling it out and tearing the page away. After starting again, Naruto smiled before coming to a pause in his writing and glancing at Shino and smiling wider and finishing the note. Passing the note to the first of the two gate guards, Naruto bowed politely, I know it might not seem like much to you guys, but even though it's not a clan practice, Hinata really tried hard to get this far at the academy, Naruto began before standing, please, I don't want my friend to miss something this important and regret it later. The two guards looked at each other as Naruto stepped back by Shino's side and turned away, a moment later, and Shino did the same before the two of them walked off. After a few minutes of walking, they entered the first portion of the shopping district, meaning that they were nearing halfway of their walk back. But they came to a stop as Naruto stared at the sign of a nearby shop, um, Shino. Naruto asked. Shino looked back, yes. He asked. Naruto pointed up at the large clock that was part of the sign, what time does that say? Naruto asked calmly, just in case he had misread it. Shino turned his head and looked at the clock, we're late. Now when you say alternate you mean. Iruka fasipumed, we've been through this Sasuke, what's with the 20 questions all of a sudden? Iruka rhetorically asked. 
Sasuke sat coolly in his desk, trying to keep his face blank as everyone stared at him in shock, though he wasn't sure if it was because that was the fifth time he'd asked that question, the fact he'd been asking the same repetitive questions for almost 20 minutes, or the fact that he was talking so much, well you haven't given me a sufficient enough answer yet so. Sasuke muttered. Aruka sighed and looked to the other teacher, are you experiencing the same thing I am right now? I think I'm going nuts. Aruka exclaimed. Azuki just shrugged, I think so. He asked. Am. Everyone turned as the classroom door slammed open and Naruto charged inside, made it. He shouted before falling flat on his face. Shino jogged and a few seconds later, merely breathing heavily as he surveyed the room. Seeing that everyone was staring at him, an experience he literally had never had before, he just took two slow steps over to an empty desk in the front row and took a seat. Naruto pushed himself into an upright position and chuckled nervously, um, sorry for being late, have you guys started? Naruto asked as he scratched the back of his head. The classroom was quiet for a moment until Sasuke cleared his throat, I get it now sensei, thanks. Sasuke said with a calm smirk. Iruka just blinked owlishly as Naruto retreated to an empty seat next to Sasuke, before sharing a bewildered look with Mizuki, who just shrugged back at him, weirdest graduation day ever. Iruka thought to himself as he lifted up a clipboard. Alright, if there are no more questions. Haruka started as he pointedly staring at Sasuke as if daring him, then let's get started, just like with the practice tests okay. I call your name and we take you next door. Haruka explained as he pointed to the adjoined examination room. Okay, up first, Shino Aburam. Knock knock. Anata sama Anata rolled over in her bed to face the door. Her room was dark as the blinds were drawn completely, she wore her plain grey pajama bottoms and a white tank top over a long series of bandages wrapped around her torso. Her entire frame covered by a thin sheet as her emotionless eyes were drawn to the crack in the door, yes? She asked weakly. The high Uga branch woman stepped into the room and closed the door behind her as she came to kneel next to Hinata's bed. Since the incident with Kenta Hayuga, the man who saw Hinata's uncertainty about using the cage bird seal and used it for his sick personal pleasure, Hinata had barely eaten enough to survive and hadn't left her room. Though according to her counselor, that wasn't too surprising since she had just been raped, cut and beaten. Feeling a touch on her cold hand, Hinata recoiled as she begun to listen to what the branch member was saying, sorry. Hinata asked. The woman sighed, Hinata-sama, a blonde boy who called himself Naruto, left a note for you at the gate. He really wanted to know how you were Hinata-sama. She said pleadingly. Hinata looked at the note as it was placed on the pillow next to her head, Naruto. She thought as the Hayuga woman moved around to the other side of the bed. As she opened the blinds, Hinata reached up and unfolded the paper as she began to read with the help from the sunlight. Naruto send you. Mizuki said as he stuck his head out the open door. Naruto stood up and marched down the steps confidently. Though Sasuke and Shino both doubted his certainty since they had yet to see him perform the clone technique. Naruto closed the door behind him as Mizuki took his seat again. Hiruka began talking the moment the door was shut, so Naruto, are you applying for the extra credit marks? Hiruka asked. Naruto nodded and raised his hand as it glowed green, medical chakra, and alternate chakra type. Naruto said calmly before stepping over to the line of tables against the side of the room. Mizuki and Aruka watched as Naruto unrolled a blank scroll to the first section and lifted the ink brush from the pot in front of him. Naruto got to work and in around 30 seconds, had calmly produced a storage seal. Naruto brought the scroll over as the ink dried, placing it in front of Aruka and Mizuki before stepping back. Aruka placed his now empty coffee cup on the seal before sending his chakra into it. Poof. Good work Naruto. Aruka said with a smile as he wrote another tick on his checklist, at this rate, even if he can't do the clone technique he'll still pass. He's the first to have gotten 100% in every exam in years. Aruka thought as he nodded to Mizuki. The blue-haired chunin pulled out a blunted shuriken, substitution, go. Mizuki shouted as he threw the shuriken. Without a hand seal and within a simple puff of smoke, Naruto had replaced himself with a chair that let off a thunk as the shuriken bounced off it, earning another nod from Aruka. As Ruka took notes on his clipboard, Mizuki barked out orders for the next technique, transformation, go. Naruto formed a hand seal this time to focus on the transformation. Poof. Standing in Naruto's place was Tsunade Senju, a perfect replica. Aruka and Mizuki nodded as Aruka began to take notes, okay, and last but not least, a clone technique. Mizuki said with a smirk, now he'll fail and considering his commitment to making Tsunade happy, he'll take my backup test for certain. He thought secretly. Poof. As the original Naruto appeared from the smoke, he was holding a hybrid hand seal in the shape of a cross, shadow clone jutsu. Naruto announced as his chakra pushed out around him. 
Iruka and Mizuki's eyes widened as eight Naruto's poofed into existence, surrounding the original and showing that they were solid by having them simultaneously pull out a chair each and take a seat as he smirked, okay guys, we're done. Naruto said casually with a grin. Iruka blinked in shock, shadow clones how? Iruka asked. Naruto grinned, like Kasa and explained before Sensei, my chakra is too thick for the normal clones, so now she taught me this one instead. As his clones nodded and stood, pushing the chairs back before dispelling. As the clone smoke wafted away, Hiroka stood, dropping his clipboard as he grabbed a headband from the desk, here's your headband Naruto, congratulations on becoming a genin. Hiroka said with a genuine smile. Naruto grinned as he accepted the headband, thanks sensei. Naruto said as he kept it in his hand and left the room. Closing the door behind him, Naruto turned to the class and grinned as he held up his headband in victory. Slam. Anata sama Tears fell from her eyes as she ran towards the gate of her compound, Naruto's letter clenched in her fist. I'm so sorry Hinata Haim, I've worked out what happened. Hinata's Byakugan eyes spotted the Hyuga guardsman beginning to push the gate closed, I won't stay here father. I am strong enough for this. She thought as she ran forward. If you remember my mother, you will remember she helped you. As her son and your friend I always will too. Hinata. But I can't help if you don't get up. I've seen it, you are stronger than this Hinata. Glancing over her shoulder, Hinata's tears picked back up as she saw her father glaring at her from his upstairs office balcony, stop her. He as she shouted. Don't let that creep's actions define you, lift yourself back up to the light. I'm not staying here. Hinata thought as her tears began to slow as she watched the gate closed. This is your chance to become a genin. To fulfill a six-year goal you started when you entered the academy. You can't let him stop you. Anada paused as a branch member tried to grab her arm, but she ducked under the arm as she sent Chakra to her feet, gliding for a moment, as if skating in a spin to dodge his grab. Please come back, come and help yourself back up onto your feet so that your friends can help you. Me, Shino and Sasuke believe in you. The clan stared in shock as Hinata's Chakra balanced under her just like the tree climbing exercise, she pushed hard and leapt up. I promise, I will guide you. Naruto Senju will back you up 100%. Anada landed with a roll on the roof of the building opposite her clan's compound, she stood and brushed the dirt from her pajamas quickly as she leapt onto the main road and began running, her bare feet slapping against the ground loudly as she pushed through the crowd on her way to the academy, her byakugan showing her the way. Chime. Iruka looked up at the clock and smiled as he placed his clipboard down, now I officially end the day's examination, congratulations everyone. Iruka exclaimed happily. The classroom full of new genin cheered and began talking animatedly once the news was shared, but Naruto and Shino shared a glance before looking at the door, unfortunately not seeing Hinata. She was too late. Now, since you're all just graduating, you get scaled based on the overall score of your final tests, Iruka began as he lifted up his clipboard, taking off the first sheet, as he began passing them out alphabetically, Shino, you got pretty good, above average. Iruka congratulated before moving on from Aburam to Akamichi. Mizuki stood as well as he held up his own clipboard and began clapping for attention, alright settle down. Our last acts as your sensei is to inform you about ninja registration, from 3 onwards the registry will be open, and all you have to do is go and get your photo taken and fill out a few forms. The registry will be open for the next few days, so it's no rush, Mizuki said with a shrug, but the most important thing is to come back to the academy and meet in your original classroom at 9 tomorrow morning for team assignments. Mizuki explained. A class nodded as Aruka stood next to Mizuki, alright, that's it then. Off you go. Aruka said loudly. In an instant most had vacated the room, then the remaining girls basically chased Sasuke out as they screamed for his approval. Naruto sighed as he stood up from his chair, glancing over to the sleeping Shikamaru, as Choji tried to wake him up before hearing loud footsteps. Naruto turned and looked at the entryway from the back of the room as did Shino who was moments from walking out. Slam. Sensei, Hinata gasped out weakly, I am here. Iruka looked up from his gathering of paperwork as Mizuki picked up the box with the sealing equipment, Hinata. Iruka asked in shock as Shikamaru woke from the loud noise. Hinata walked up to Naruto and paused in front of him as she gripped his hand for a moment, thank you, she said with a soft smile, before moving a few steps closer to Iruka, Iruka Sensei, I'm here for the genin examination. Hinata said politely, trying to ignore the cool temperature of the classroom through her thin clothes. Iruka sighed, Hinata. I'm sorry but this year's tests are over, you'll have to wait until next time. Iruka said apologetically. Next time Naruto shouted as he stood, screw that. Hinata is a better ninja than most of the kids you just let pass, she already is genin level, so can't you just pretend that you haven't closed the exams yet? Naruto pleaded. Iruka shook his head with a sigh, it's not that simple. Iruka began. 
Iruka, Mizuki began as he placed down the sealing equipment, maybe we could just this once you know. I mean we've both trained Hinata here for a few years now, I think you know as well as I do that she's more than capable. Mizuki said, hoping to get on Hinata's good side as he began to formulate a backup plan. Iruka shook his head, no Mizuki, you know we can't do that. Iruka said softly before leaving the room. There was a thick silence as Choji and Shikamaru tried to sneakily leave, Shino following after them, as he thought it best that Hinata be left alone. If she was pissed she could hurt someone, and unlike Naruto, Shino doesn't have healing abilities. Naruto watched Hinata from behind as her shoulders began to shake, she fell to her knees in defeat, as she began to cry again, no. No. She said sadly between loud sobs. Naruto was by her side in a moment, moving to hug her for comfort, but she recoiled from his touch before he lightly placed a hand on hers, letting her grip it, as her tears began to really pour forth. You know. There is always other ways to qualify. Naruto and Hinata looked up at Mizuki as the chunin looked around, as if to check there was no one but the three of them nearby, sensei. Naruto asked hopefully. Mizuki sighed as he mentally finalized his own plans, perfect. He thought as he schooled his emotions, there are a few other ways to become genin, like the way I did back in the day was taking one of the Hokage's special scrolls. The law still is in effect so you could do it to Hinata. Mizuki explained. Naruto's brow furrowed, not having heard of anything like it before, then again, I haven't been in a village like this for years. Naruto thought as Hinata straightened up, though her tears didn't pause. Seeing he had her attention, Mizuki continued with his explanation, you know, I can set that test up for you if you'd like. Mizuki asked with a kind smile. Hinata nodded immediately, why yes please sensei, if I don't come back to the clan successfully, then I, I don't think my father will be too happy. Hinata said as she pushed herself into a standing position. Naruto's brow furrowed at her words while Mizuki thought nothing of it, very good, well I'll set up the mission for you in the same room I once used. The aim is to get the specified scroll and learn an ninjutsu from it, before the examiner can find you, in this case, me. Hinata nodded as she did her best to memorize the information, but Naruto tilted his head and thought, excuse me Mizuki-sensei, but what scroll is it? Naruto asked. Mizuki glanced at Naruto with the slightest twitch of annoyance, Naruto, why don't you wait outside for a moment? I'll explain the test to Hinata some more. Mizuki said. Naruto frowned before sharing a look with Hinata, who simply nodded to him as she held his letter up to her chest with her free hand. Naruto sighed but nodded, I'll be outside Hinata. Naruto said before walking away. Naruto opened the door as Mizuki began talking, now, the room is adjoined to the Hokage's office, that's the. Naruto sighed as the door closed behind him, something feels wrong about this. Naruto mumbled to himself. It would seem that Mizuki is planning on stealing the forbidden scroll of sealing. Naruto turned to Shino as the now genin calmly communicated with a small beetle on his nose, Shino. Naruto asked. Shino lowered his hand as he turned to Naruto, showing the new forehead protector he wore proudly on his forehead, yes, me. My bugs are currently listening and relaying everything that he's saying to her. I know for a fact this information is a lie as my bugs can feel his hidden emotions, and no such test exists in the confines of this village. Shino explained. Naruto's face turned into a full scowl as he put his hand on the classroom door, okay, we need to stop Mizuki. But more importantly, we need to make sure Hinata is safe on this mission of his. Naruto thought before looking down at his headband and smirking. Pulling the headband up and tying it around his own forehead, Naruto turned to Shino with a grin, hey Shino, want to help me catch a criminal. Hinata landed with a roll as she made it to the clearing, she breathed heavily as she opened the forbidden scroll, just one jutsu, I just need one. She thought as she came to a technique that required only one hand seal, the shadow clone jutsu. She muttered out loud. Fun technique, it helps when you want your mom to think you're home, but really you're following a friend in danger. Hinata turned with wide eyes to see Naruto and Shino step out from behind the cabin, Naruto smirking as Shino readjusted his glasses, Naruto. Shino. She asked in confusion. Ignoring her shock, Naruto came to a stop by her side as he read the scroll over her shoulder, what else we got here? He mumbled to himself as he looked at the next Rijutsu that he could see. Hinata stared at the side of Naruto's head for a moment of silent shock when Shino spoke up, Hinata, you should get started on that ninjutsu, it's the only way for you to become a genin is it not? Shino said. Hinata smiled brightly as she realized the two were there to support her, she began to tear up again before putting on a serious expression and turning back to the scroll, placing it down on the ground and pushing it so that it unrolled some of the way. Naruto and Shino stepped back as she began reading everything she could find about the Shadow Clone Jutsu. They looked up and down the long scroll before Naruto turned to Shino, hey, do you reckon it would be so bad if we learned something here too? Naruto asked. Shino was still for a moment before shaking his head, it would only be logical for us to take this opportunity to grow as ninja. 
Shino said before walking down the length of the scroll, presumably reading the ninjutsu titles from behind his shades. Naruto smirked at Shino before beginning to look for a ninjutsu he could learn, making it down the line rather quickly, before he paused at a section with sealing arts, reaper death seal, dosed flame seal, sealing art. Jito mark, sealing art. Bloodline inheritance. Naruto thought as his eyes came to a stop and he dropped to his knees to begin reading for himself. Title. Sealing art. Bloodline inheritance. Hype. Seal. Classification. Permitted war seal. Rank. A+. Bloodline inheritance is a seal that ventures into the coating of the user's chakra and finds their latent bloodline, if they are a recent ancestor had one, and integrates it into the current user's natural chakra, forcing potential Keke Genkai to activate. Warnings. When used on a person without a latent Keke Genkai, physical mutations will occur in place of chakra mutations, do not attempt unless under qualified supervision. Naruto smirked as he finished reading, with this I'll unlock one of the Yuzumaki clan's chakra mutations. I really hope I get the chakra chains. Naruto thought as he pulled out his sealing scroll and moved to the third seal in it. Poof. With his sealing utensils in hand, Naruto set to work copying the seal step by step onto some chakra-laced paper, causing the seal to slowly settle with each stroke. About two minutes later, Naruto paused and looked up to see Shino and Hinata standing up in the clearing and taking their first shot at the ninjutsu they decided to learn. Shadow clone jutsu. Hinata shouted as her chakra pushed harder than she'd ever had to before. Ninja art. Dragonfly. Shino announced as he formed two separate one-handed seals and his chakra traveled up and down his back. Naruto smirked before turning back to his seal, now Hinata did the mission and will be here to help her against Mizuki team. Naruto thought before looking off to the edge of the clearing and making eye contact with one of his own hidden shadow clones. The clone nodded at the look and dispelled in a plume of smoke. The Naruto clone back in the Senju household looked up in realization from its scroll on the fireball jutsu, time to get Kasan. It muttered as it rolled the scroll back up, practicing the hand seals to try and memorize them, as he moved to go get Tsunade. I did it. Hinata and her clone exclaimed happily before they hugged each other, laughing in success as Hinata's eyes began to water up again, now that I'm a genin father will have to let me out of the compound to see my team and do missions. Hinata thought happily as she leaned against her clone. The two Hinatas sat down and leant against each other as they looked at opposite sides of the clearing. Shino was on his knees panting heavily before he took a deep breath and put his hands by his sides, his left being a one-handed dragon seal and his right a one-handed bird seal, dragonfly. Shino exclaimed before jumping up with a push of chakra. As Shino passed a meter into the air, four wings materialized using the skin and materials on his back in an understandably painful maneuver. But the wings flapped quickly with a low hum, allowing Shino to level out in the air before he flew forward, having difficulty turning, but still learning to fly. The Hinata clone watched as Naruto finally stood from his seal riding and moved the sheet over to a flat piece of dirt. Naruto looked at it for a moment as he sent chakra into it, causing the seal to glow an eerie blue before Naruto took off his shirt. Naruto turned his back to the seal and accidentally made eye contact with the Hinata clone. The clone blushed and Naruto shared a smile before Naruto raised his arms in a cross and began to fall back, aiming to land back first on the glowing seal. The cocoon of chakra wrapped around Naruto before it began to shrink down, now both Hinatas were staring at the bright glow as Shino watched from a distance. Shit. Is she sending off a flare or something? What's with that light? Mizuki thought as he saw a white light flash from a position off to his left. Aya. Shino and Hinata stared with wide eyes as the seal Naruto was using suddenly began to cause him pain. The cocoon began to form the shape of Naruto's body as it continued to shrink down to the size of him and encompass him, showing the two of them that Naruto was holding his hands to his eyes in pain, Naruto. Shino shouted from his place above the trees. The cocoon compacted and sent out a burst of chakra that hit Hinata's clone, causing it to dispel and ruffle the real Hinata's clothes, but luckily protect her. But a moment later, the cocoon compacted again. Shino dove in quick as the next burst of chakra was about to hit Hinata. Shino landed with a slide, skidding on his knees to grab her around the torso before he jumped again, his wings beating fast to carry them up and out of the range of the chakra shell's pulses. The two watched as Naruto's scream came to a sudden halt after three more pulses of chakra, but they didn't dare move, since someone had just entered the clearing. Mizuki looked around with wide eyes at the disturbance Naruto's chakra caused, which made him raise a brow, the Senju boy. Where's Hinata? Mizuki asked himself as he walked past the unconscious boy and over to the forbidden scroll. Hinata's eyes widened as she saw her teacher ignore Naruto's obvious pain, why isn't? SHHH, Mizuki isn't who you think he is. He was using you to steal the scroll for some reason. Shino whispered between deep breaths as the two of them circled the clearing to land on the top branch of a tree that looked over Naruto. 
Inada's eyes widened at the words, B, but what about the test? She asked. Izuki's loud laughter distracted the two of them for a moment, finally. Now I can return to Orochimaru-sama's side with praise. Mizuki announced as he lifted the forbidden scroll into his arms. Orochimaru. Mizuki turned to see Aruka step from the cover of the tree line, moving around and spotting Naruto as he moved completely into view, Mizuki, what have you done with Hinata, and what is your plan with that scroll? Aruka demanded. Mizuki smirked as he held the scroll under his arm, I've done nothing to the girl, don't know where that disgrace has gone off to. But I guess it doesn't matter after all right? Mizuki asked mockingly. Aruka's brow furrowed, what do you mean? Aruka asked. Mizuki scoffed, come on. We both know that now she's been popped and ran away he ashi won't want her, he's always believed women of the clan are best used for treaties and inter-clan marriage contracts, her state and attitude says that's not gonna happen. She's useless to him now, especially since he can replace her with Hanabi, the gifted one. Mizuki said calmly with a shrug, and since she's already run once, she's a threat to the clan. Aruka's rage was obvious on his face, hopped. He asked rhetorically, knowing full well what had happened to Hinata, how dare you? Hinata had something precious to her taken by force. The first Hayuga to not be an absolute dickhead, and she was mistreated and abused. Aruka shouted, pure angry rolling off of him in waves, and you used her for this. Aruka nearly roared as he bared his teeth, ready to kill Mizuki, regardless of the consequences. Mizuki shrugged, this is the ninja world jackass, other people have done much worse. He said with a dark smirk. Haruka went to charge at Mizuki when the chunin dropped to a knee, his fingers wrapping around Naruto's throat, not today Aruka, back off or the kid gets it. Mizuki shouted. Aruka shook his head with a dark chuckle, you know, I'm glad you threatened Naruto's life like that, no why? Haruka asked mockingly as he continued marching towards Mizuki. The chunin's grip tightened, why? Mizuki asked. Cause I'm a medic idiot, the medical chakra in my system wakes me up when I'm unnaturally unconscious. Naruto said casually as Mizuki looked down at him with wide eyes. Naruto slashed upwards with his right hand, but Mizuki pushed himself off of Naruto, thinking he had successfully dodged before he fell to a knee, his other leg not responding properly, what? Mizuki asked in shock. Naruto vaulted himself back as his blue glowing eyes shone with a new Sharingan, a blue version of the original that sat in both of his eyes instead of just the one. Naruto smirked as his new eyes worked with little effort on his part, as if he was a natural Ichiha. Mizuki glared at Naruto as Aruka charged at him from behind, jumping up to land a solid double kick, one to the back of Mizuki's head and one to his shoulder, throwing the chunin onto his hands and knees, while forcing him to let go of the scroll, with a scream of pain, as his shoulder was dislocated. Mizuki shouted angrily as Aruka grabbed a scroll and leapt back to land just in front of Naruto, stupid fucking. Mizuki grumbled under his voice as he forced himself to stand on shaky legs, pulling out a battle shuriken into his working hand, stop fighting me. Mizuki shouted as he threw himself forward. Shadow clone jutsu. The three men on the ground paused and looked up as two Hinatas fell toward Mizuki. The first Hinata was thrown ahead at the last moment, forcing Mizuki on the defensive as she struck low before jumping up, the second Hinata did the same landing a second later, as Mizuki's attention focused on the airborne Hinata kicking at his head. Mizuki blocked as the second Hinata dove through his legs to come up behind Mizuki and slam a gentle fist strike into his back. Mizuki gasped as the strike threw him off, allowing the first Hinata to aim a kick at Mizuki's face. Mizuki barely leaned out of the way of the kick and slashed through the air with his shuriken, destroying the clone as the real Hinata leapt back. Insect ball. Mizuki had turned and missed a slash at the real Hinata, before hearing the shout from above, Mizuki looked up, seeing Shino had formed his bugs into a large ball of chakra-eating bugs. Usually the attack was a slow one as the bugs had to fly across a distance, but with Shino carrying the bugs, it was a stronger and faster attack. The bug ball exploded on Mizuki, throwing the chunin at Naruto and Naruka. Naruka moved so that his downward kick slammed into the back of Mizuki's head, plowing him into the ground face first. Mizuki rolled painfully across the ground, coming to a stop against Naruto's foot. Mizuki weakly looked up into Naruto's blue Sharingan eyes, as the genin made a fist, you're going straight to Gal, no trial, no hurting any of my friends, and no Orochimaru. Naruto announced as his hand glowed green and he swung his punch. Here is inside as he sat back in his chair, bringing his pipe to his lips, as he lit it up with a spark of fire chakra, that was ridiculous, those three managed to learn air rank techniques in only a few hours, not just any ninja can do that. Here is in thought while blowing out some smoke. Hiruzen's eyes softened as he watched Hinata look at Mizuki sadly, and this girl just broke free of the clan after recovering from an extremely traumatizing position, learned a jutsu she shouldn't even have the chakra to achieve, and helped in taking down an active chunin defector. Even in her pajamas. Hiruzen thought before turning to his door and glancing at the candle on his desk. 
Blowing out the candle, the lights in his office automatically lit up as Hiruzen cleared his throat, you're allowed in now. He said calmly. Bam. Soon a day stormed in angrily as the door she had punched flew out the window, what the hell is going on sensei? She demanded as two other men walked in behind her. I am currently filing for banishment for someone in my clan, I have more important matters to attend to than to wait at your door old man. He ashi said disrespectfully. Shaibi merely stood silently as he waited for an explanation. Hiruzen took a pull of his pipe and calmly looked over the three in front of him silently. He blew out the smoke through his nose before looking firstly at Hiashi, tell me, I've heard that Hinata may be a threat to the Hyuga clan, is that true? He asked. Hiashi sighed quietly, yes, it is true. Hiruzen nodded, so, she is also the one that is being banished to the branch family of the clan. He asked. Hiashi smirked, the paperwork is filled, I'm just having it filed in the Hyuga archives. As of tomorrow morning it will be filed and therefore, become clan law. Hiashi said, knowing his work was done. Tsuna Day closed her eyes as she suppressed her rage, though she was glad she wasn't the one that had to show it. Shaibi's fist slammed into Hiashi's face, sending the man to the ground in shock. Hiashi stared at Shaibi before the man bowed to the Hiruzen, my apologies Hokage-sama, I slipped. Shaibi said calmly. Hiruzen nodded as Hiashi lost his composure and spluttered in shock, slipped. He shouted. Forgiven Shaibi, Hiruzen said with a smile, Hiashi, the matter is closed. He finalized. Hiashi was about to speak up when Tsuna Day slammed her fist into the Hokage's desk, forget this idiot and tell me where my son is. Tsuna Day demanded. Hiashi quietened down at Tsuna Day's words, feeling hurt as he still believed that the two of them held a special connection. Here is inside after taking a long drag from his pipe, since Hinata is no longer part of your direct family Hiashi, you aren't needed here. I'm sorry for putting you out like this. He said with a tired smile. The ashy bristled with annoyance and anger before hiding it under his mask of no emotions. He turned and briskly walked out of the office, slamming the door behind him. There is inside as he took another drag of his pipe, Haruka is bringing Naruto, Shino and Hinata here now, along with the Forbidden Scroll and their prisoner. Hinata was given an impossible task to achieve with a promise of Genin status as her reward. But she more than achieved, she learned to use an air rank jutsu in around three hours. Hiruzen said, letting that dawn on them. Shaibi looked out the window for a moment in contemplation, then it would be logical she be given Genin status. But what of my son? He asked. Hiruzen smiled, Shino also learned an A-rank jutsu that goes with his style perfectly. While Naruto found and used a special seal that awakened any hidden bloodlines, he may have had locked away in his chakra coils. Hiruzen explained. Tsunade blinked at that, unsure of what to expect, so like, one of those chakra mutations. She asked. Hiruzen scratched his chin and thought as he looked up at the ceiling, well, I think that's what he might have been aiming for, but it seems that instead it's done something with his Sharingan. The Hokage explained. Tsunade and Shaibi were stunned quiet for a moment before a knocking was heard at the door, causing Hiruzen to straighten up as he nodded to Shaibi. Shaibi took a few short steps and opened the door silently, letting Aruka lead the way and followed by the children, Kasan. Naruto exclaimed as he ran over to Tsunade, hugging her around the waist. Tsuna Day sighed in relief as she took a knee, hugging Naruto tightly right back as she relaxed, thank the log, I couldn't stand to lose you too. Tsuna Day thought protectively as she felt the Senju necklace press against her collarbone from its place around Naruto's neck. Naruto swallowed deeply as he felt the familiar tremor of holding and tears run through his mother's body, Kasan. Naruto thought with a fair bit of guilt as he tightly hugged her back. Tsuna Day stepped back as she stood tall again, though a hand didn't leave Naruto's shoulder as she turned back to face the Hokage. Following her ex sensei's gaze, she immediately understood why he was quiet. Hinata looked at the ground quietly with a soft smile on her face, as Shino and Naruto were embraced by their parents, I'm glad their parents are here for them, it would hurt a lot if they were left alone after an ordeal like that. She thought, honestly happy for her friends while unknowingly sad at her own loneliness. Hinata. The young girl looked up as the Hokage said her name, causing her to blush in embarrassment as she realized everyone was staring at her. In her pajamas, why yes Hokage-sama. She asked timidly. The Hokage leaned forward as he watched her eyes, tell me, what would you rather, the life of a ninja? Or slavery in your clan? He asked calmly. Hinata's eyes widened at his words, I um, why? She asked as she felt tears building up in her eyes. The Hokage kept a calming expression on his face as he spoke, your father, Hiashi, has expelled you from his clan for leaving the compound against his order for the last time. 
be believed that after your experience, you would only do good as a branch house slave, giving way for Hanabi to become clan head, here is an explained, watching as Hanada's arms fell slack by her sides, right at this moment, you are being removed from the main house family, and you have two options that you need to sort out right now, if you want to live under your own power. Here is an explained. Hanada stood in stunned silence for a moment as stared at the Hokage for nearly a full minute. Hanada, the Hokage said forcefully, causing her to look up at him again, as of this moment, you are not part of the Hyuga clan, by tomorrow morning, you will be part of the Hyuga's branch family. As a ninja of the village, even a clan head needs your vocalized grant to become part of a clan. If you register as a ninja of the Leaf Village right now, you will be Hanada, Genin of the Leaf. No one but me would have direct influence over you. Here is said as Hanada's eyes finally seemed to show realization, not even a clan head. Hanada was silent for a moment as she nodded slowly, D do I have a chance at becoming Genin before tomorrow? She asked, her stutter nearly evaporated by the time she was done talking. Hiruzen smirked as he moved his hand, relaxing it on top of a new Kanoha headband that sat on his desk, well, it is against the law for me to leave an unattended civilian alone when they have knowledge on a high-level ninjutsu, so either I let the genius that managed to learn an air-rank jutsu become a ninja under my watch, or I have her imprisoned for an unspecified time period. Hiruzen said as he lifted the headband towards Hinata, Hinata of the Leaf, do you accept a position as genin of our village? He offered with a smile. Hinata began to smile softly as she took a step forward, but the moment her foot touched ground, she paused, but. What about Hanabi Amato-chan? Hinata asked. Everyone paused at that. After a few moments, Shibi spoke up calmly, what is it that you are concerned about with your sister? He asked. Hanada chewed her bottom lip nervously, Tusan, he doesn't accept failure very well, and without me to be there. What if someone beats her in a training spar? Hanada asked, no more stutter evident in her voice. Garrison's brow furrowed, I'm not sure what exactly you mean Hanada, but if you aren't part of that clan, you can't be persecuted by a clan for looking into an issue of child abuse. Hiruzen clarified. Hanada's eyes widened, can. Will I be protected by being a ninja of the village if I know things about the clan? She asked quietly. Hiruzen nodded, yes, but only if you don't have the cage bird seal am I right? He asked, wanting confirmation for a theory he'd agreed with upon hearing years before. Hanada nodded as she stepped forward towards the Hokage's desk again, the truth beginning to pour out of her, yes, when branch members try to speak up or leave the clan, the elders of the main branch use it as a chance to show the younger generation how they basically enslave the branch family with the threat of pain and death, that's why I she paused as she took a shaky breath, I. I hate the caged bird seal. Hanada nearly shouted suddenly, her tears pouring forth through her eyes, I hate my family for what they do to their cousins, I hate the clan for the separation and hatred they show each other, she said as she cried, I hate that my. My own father hurts everyone. I always have to play the weaker one between Hanabi and I, cause if she loses he'll hit her instead. I hate that the weakness I've had to hide behind made Kenta want to hurt me and I hate not being able to stop it. She shouted with rage and sorrow filled tears pouring down her face. Naruto and Tsunade stared in shock as the usually quiet Hinata finally seemed to explode with everything she had kept bottled inside, but it seemed like this was the reaction Hiruzen had wanted or expected, since he was easily able to reply, then take this chance to stop it all Hinata. Hiruzen's powerful voice rang out as he stood, looking down at Hinata with a glow of encouragement in his gaze, this is the first step that only you can take to end these harsh clan practices, this is one of the moments that defines your life, he said as he walked around the desk, kneeling, so that he was at eye level with Hinata, will you hide in the clan and be slave to the Hyuga? He asked as he placed a hand on her shoulder, or will you be the light that saves them? Hiruzen asked as he lifted his other hand, holding out the headband and offering. Hanada placed her hand on the headband and smiled softly, yes, she said in a slightly raspy voice, after shouting for the first time she could even remember, I I choose to be Hanada of the Leaf, not of the Hyuga. Hanada said with a slight smile towards the Hokage. The Hokage looked up at the nearly forgotten Aruka, Aruka, would you do the honors? After all only a teacher can announce an official graduation into the ninja life. Hiruzen said. Iruka blinked once before smiling from his place at the door, Hi Hokage-sama, Iruka said as he took the headband from Hinata and begun to wrap it around her forehead, I officially declare you a genin of the Leaf Village Hinata. Iruka said with his smile still in place as he stepped back. Hinata turned to Iruka with a bright smile, teeth and all as her shell of fear, quiet and sadness was all but shattered, thank you Iruka-sensei. She exclaimed happily, her new headband tied firmly on her forehead. So, you need a place to stare right? Everyone in the office looked at Naruto as he finally stepped out of Tsunade's grasp and towards the ex Hyuga as she stared at him with wide eyes, don't you need a place to live now after the Hyuga clan house? 
He asked before looking up at Tsunade, I still have the spare room in my part of the house Kasan, can I offer it to Hinata? Naruto asked hopefully. Tsunade looked at Naruto with a smile, never able to deny him a thing, and knowing that Hinata deserved to be treated better, of course, she said, looking to Hinata with a smile, and I'll have Shizun take you shopping in the morning for some appropriate attire. If you want that is. Tsunade offered Hinata. Hinata looked between Naruto and Tsunade for a moment before nodding, yes, that would be. Great. Hinata said, her smiling only growing larger in size. Hiruzen smiled as he stood, it settled then, he said before clapping, bringing everyone's attention back to him, it's very late, so let's conclude this meeting for now. Hiruzen ordered. Shino looked up, and our incident reports Hokage-sama. Shino asked. Hiruzen stroked his beard as he begun walking back to his chair, true, well I'll tell you what, by the time you each get your first mission at which point of time I will see you in the mission hall, I would like a written report from each and every one of you detailing the entire incident, he said before looking up at Aruka, but I'll have yours by tomorrow afternoon. As well as Mizuki's work desk at the academy brought here as well via ceiling scroll, okay. Aruka nodded, hi Hokage-sama. He agreed. The third Hokage looked around the room one more time, taking in everyone's eyes as they felt the gravity of the situation. The Hayuga just lost some major power in the Leaf Village. Opening the door to his half of the house, Naruto stepped aside to allow Hinata to walk in past him, welcome home Hinata. Naruto said with a kind smile. Hinata looked over the small apartment-like area with a new look in her eyes, home. She muttered with a sigh. Naruto frowned slightly as he watched Hinata stop a few steps into his place, he closed the door softly before looking at the clock on his wall, seeing it was nearing 2 in the morning, tell you what Hinata, I'll grab some of my smaller clothes that should fit you and leave them here, Naruto said as he crossed past Hinata, going to the first door visible from the doorway. Right outside the bathroom door, since the other room isn't set up yet you can use my bedroom for the night, since you'll need to be up early with Shizun Nichan, he said as he gestured down the short hallway, I'll leave the light on for you. Naruto said with a kind smile. Hinata nodded before her shoulders began to shake. Naruto raised a brow before his medical training kicked in, the shock has worn off, she's about to break. Naruto realized as he stepped forward. Hinata collapsed to the side, getting caught by Naruto's strong arms before she came to a stop in his grip. She began to cry out her pain, everything that had pent up, her father, her clan, the incident with the late Kenta Hayuga. She let it all out. Naruto sat quietly as he enveloped his arms in medical chakra. The simple technique giving her a warm and comforting embrace as it began to amplify her brain's reading of her emotions. Causing her to feel as much of the emotional pain she could handle in one massive push, so that she could recover quicker. She sobbed. Naruto blinked and swallowed heavily as he tried to hold back his own tears. He could feel her pain as if it was oozing out of her and into him, the downside of being a medical ninja. Empathy is the key to healing emotional problems, but in itself, the most painful for the healer. Naruto thought as he held her tight. Naruto closed his eyes as a single tear fell, waiting calmly. Nearly an hour passed before Hinata's breathing evened out, and Naruto felt her go limp in his arms as she passed into sleep. Naruto sighed as he slowly maneuvered her into his arms and stood, holding her in a bear hug as he placed her gently on the couch nearby, resting her head on the armrest. Naruto sighed as he walked to his bedroom, opening the door quietly as he cleared his bed and set up the pillows for her. A few moments later, Naruto closed the door to his bedroom as he left her sleep before he walked to the adjoining door and sighed before yawning, geez, this day sure was fun. Naruto thought sarcastically before looking up at the low light with a smirk, as his blue Sharingan eyes span slowly, then again, at least something good came out of it. Naruto thought with a light chuckle as he stepped out of the hallway and into the main house. Dude, you're still up. Naruto looked over to his mother with a smile as he stepped out of the small hallway, seeing her on a large couch as leant against the armrest, come here, don't think I'd miss that your eyes have changed. She ordered as she straightened up to give Naruto room. Naruto sighed as he moved over to the couch and lay down, resting his head on his mother's lap, as he looked up at the ceiling and yawned, I made it today Kasan, I'm a genin now. Naruto said with a smile. Tsunade nodded with a smile, yes you are, and one day you could become the world's greatest medic like I did, or maybe even even Hokage like Siratobi sensei She said as she placed her green glowing hand over his eyes, having him close them as she began to analyze them. Naruto scoffed, no way, Hokage. I don't really want that kind of responsibility. He said before sighing, being a medical ninja is hard enough as it is. Naruto muttered. Tsunade's brow furrowed as she continued reading the chakra pathways in the eyes, what's so bad about being a medical ninja? She asked curiously, you've never shown a dislike of it before now. She said. Naruto smiled up at his mother, even with his eyes closed, yeah I know, it's just occurred to me since we've been back to the village. 
My entire job is basically about dealing with everyone else's pain and problems, he said before yawning, and I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to deal with that, or even if I want to for that matter. He said tiredly. Suna Day's eyes widened, but not because of what he said, his eyes. Both of them have matching chakra pathways, the same pathways Shisui's eye had before. But there's two other chakra pathways stemming off from the original, and the biology is all Naruto. He just made a pure blood Uzumaki Sharingan bloodline, but with something extra if the two extra pathways are anything to go by. She thought and wondered before trying to refocus on their conversation, well, just because I'm a medical ninja doesn't mean you have to be Naruto. Tell me, what would your dream job be? She asked. Naruto smiled as he felt her chakra meld easier into his chakra network, before where it was an uncomfortable feeling, now it felt extremely calming, I think. I'd want to be a ninja teacher, like, maybe a jonin sensei. Or maybe since I already can be a medic, I can eventually become a teacher for that. Or. He began with a shrug as he yawned again, maybe an academy instructor. Tsuna Day smiled softly, little Nero-chan. Always just wants to help others be stronger. She thought with a smile as she felt the fully repaired chakra pathways that she had come to associate with the Manjikyu Sharingan, it seems his Manjikyu might even be available with less damage being done to his eyes. She thought before she pulled her hands away, her examination coming to a close for the time being. Tsuna Day blinked as she noticed Naruto's still face, she smiled softly as she picked up a pillow from the side of the couch. She set it next to her head as she rested back and closed her own eyes, planning to join him and sleep for the night. Tsuna Day sama Naruto. Tsuna Day began to stir as Tsubaki called her name. She opened her eyes to see her new maid standing on the opposite side of the coffee table, two sets of a healthy breakfast sitting in front of her. As soon as the observation really settled in, Tsuna Day sat up with a jolt, shaking Naruto awake and causing him to slowly sit up with a groan, hmm. Naruto asked as he wiped his eyes from sleep. Tsuna Day cleared her throat as she looked around the top floor of their hillside house, seeing that the morning light had been pouring in the window for at least an hour, right, morning Tsubaki. Tsuna Day said with a sleepy smile. Naruto turned to the coffee table at the same time Tsuna Day did, both to take a deep breath through their noses, as the smell of the breakfast Tsubaki had made them hit their noses. Both mother and son blushed as their stomachs rumbled in unison, but that was quickly drowned out by Naruto burying his face in his meal. Tsuna Day smiled down at the food before looking up at Tsubaki, who had obviously been up and active for a few hours at least, thanks Tsubaki, Tsuna Day said as she took her first mouthful. She glanced around the room and raised a brow, where's Shizun? She asked after swallowing. Tsubaki smiled at Naruto and Tsuna Day's pleased expressions, she and Hinata went shopping about half an hour ago to find Hinata some suitable ninja wear, I would have left you two to rest, but, she paused with a glance at Naruto, as he scarfed down another mouthful, Naruto has team assignments in an hour, and you received a black label letter this morning, Tsuna Day-sama. Tsubaki said. Not knowing what a black label letter meant in a ninja village, Naruto paid it no heed as his eyes shot towards a clock, ah. I gotta get ready. Thanks for the awesome food Tsubaki. Naruto exclaimed as he jumped up to his feet. Tsuna Day watched as Naruto came back for his last piece of bacon before sprinting back off, disappearing down the hallway in a blur as he rushed to get ready. Tsubaki chuckled slightly as she watched Naruto retreat to his room, but the atmosphere quickly became heavy as she turned back to Tsuna Day, seeing the Senju clan head looking down at the envelope in front of her with a frown on her face. The plain envelope had but two things on it, a single black stripe and the mark of the Hyuga clan head, causing Tsuna Day to sigh as the events from the day before finally caught up with her, I just took in the clan heir of the Hyuga clan, the daughter of a guy with a weird man crush on me, and an unsealed free by Akugan user. Tsuna Day thought with a sigh as she looked down at the envelope, should have seen this coming. Opening the envelope, Tsuna Day began reading what she assumed would have been a threat of some kind for taking in Hinata, but she simply raised a brow as she began reading the letter to herself. Naruto threw his jacket on over his singlet as he looked down at his new ninja tools. He wore a medic belt around his hips, holding three pouches under his jacket that held all that was necessary for an advanced field medic, but sacrificing a full ninja pouch with shuriken and seal tags. He now also had a kunai holster strapped to his left leg and secretly, two storage seals stitched into the inside of his jacket sleeves. Better to be prepared for anything rather than unprepared for the random. Naruto thought to himself as he finished getting dressed and left his bedroom, a few minutes later, Naruto walked out his front door with a grin as the morning sun drenched over his form. He fastened his medic pack as he took the first few steps into the light and grinned up at it, the sunlight shining brightly off the hit eye eye which he wore as a belt buckle like his mom used to when she was genin. Looking ahead, Naruto's grin turned to a confident smirk as he began to march towards the academy, life as a Kanahagakur genin. This is gonna be cool. Naruto thought to himself as he picked up his pace a little in excitement. 
It was some time later that Naruto actually focused on where he was going, and as he looked up, he got a shock at what or rather who he was seeing in front of him. Hinata blushed as she readjusted the forehead protector over her eyes, her Byakugan secretly activated underneath to help her not only train in it, but deceive all of her enemies into thinking she was disadvantaged by her lack of sight. She rather enjoyed having it active the whole time, especially since it made her feel more comfortable about the new clothes she was wearing, considering she could see way more of anyone else than they could see of her. Hinata's short blue hair was covered by the hood over her head, but her bangs were still visible over the headband that she wore proudly. The hoodie was sleeveless and a very dark orange that in a dark light would seem closer to brown. She appeared to not be wearing a shirt underneath it, since as it stopped above her belly button, everyone could see her bare skin showing, and subsequently the scar that led down to disappear underneath her pants. Hinata's blush increased as she saw Naruto basically checking her out as he walked in the gate, his eyes very much glued to the tight black material that was closer to tights than pants other than the pockets present on them. The only thing that had stayed the same was her ninja sandals. Shizun smiled as she saw Hinata smile and turn, so he's here somewhere. Shizun thought as she looked over to the gate, seeing Naruto turn towards them, wow, those eyes of hers are really incredible. Shizun thought, still getting used to the idea of the Byakugan let alone trying to understand just what she's seeing and interpreting. Amy chan Hinata. How's the new threads? Naruto asked as he came to a stop in front of the two of them. Hinata. Hinata sighed as Kiba and Yuzuka appeared between her and Naruto, it is you. What happened? Why are you dressed like some clanless bum? Kiba asked, thinking her clothes were about as far from Hayuga tradition as his own were, it was at this moment he realized her eyes were covered under the hood, and what happened to your eyes? He asked in a moment of worry. Hinata watched Kiba for a moment as she saw him stare at the bare skin she was showing on her tummy, and unfortunately, she saw his body's reaction to her appeal as well, Kiba, keep your eyes to yourself please. I don't want your attention. Hinata said quite simply. Kiba's entire persona faltered as Naruto couldn't hold back the smirk that formed on his face, wow, Hinata doesn't waste a moment for thought now. Naruto thought with a slight chuckle that brought Kiba's attention to him. Kiba turned to Naruto and scowled at him, send you. What do you want? Kiba asked, only just realizing that he was there. Shizun glanced between Kiba who was obviously trying to assert his Inuzuka dominance, and Naruto who looked like he wanted to see the situation resolve and sighed, nope, I'm needed at the Anbu facilities, it'll just be a bother to watch this unfold. She thought before placing a hand on Hinata's shoulder. Hinata looked up at her with a smile, thank you for this morning Shizun-san, I've never had girl time before. Hinata said happily. Shizun nodded and smiled, anytime Hinata-chan, I had real fun. Shizun said, being honest as she truly did enjoy playing dress up with someone like Hinata, after all, she had a body type that fit most styles of dress. Shizun placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder as she walked past, causing Kiba to look up at her as did Naruto, I'll see you later Nari-chan, you make sure that you're careful okay? She said. Naruto grinned up at her, got it Ni-chan. He promised with a nod. But that Shizun left calmly, though she took one more glance at Kiba as she felt his gaze on her as she walked away, geez for a kitty certainly doesn't seem to think like one. Back at the trio of Genin, Naruto went to address Hinata, but Kiba stood between them as he repeated his earlier question, what do you want send you? Can't you see Hinata-chan and I have some things to talk about? He asked rhetorically as he took a step back, about to place a hand on Hinata's waist. Naruto's eyes widened, uh oh, one should never unexpectedly approach or touch someone that's been through what Hinata has, especially a creeper like Kiba. Naruto thought as he was about to intervene. Crack. Kiba shouted in pain as he nursed his pinky finger, which was suddenly bent in a very, very wrong way. Kiba stared at it for a moment and opened his mouth as he was about to scream. Naruto's hands moved quickly, one to Kiba's mouth to cover his shout, and one green glowing hand to crack his finger back into place and heal it, causing Kiba to blink owlishly as he watched his finger morph back into the right shape with no pain. Kiba, Hinata said, bring the dog boy's gaze up to her headband, causing him to feel unsettled as she seemed to look right through him, I told you before, and this is the last time I'll say it again, I don't want your attention. Hinata said with an emotionless voice. Kiba swallowed deeply and nodded, holy shit. She's become a total badass babe. Kiba said as he openly stared at her. Naruto sighed as he let go of his finger while Hinata scowled at Kiba, let's just go to class okay guys. Naruto asked with a soft smile as the morning bell went off, normally signifying class starting. But today, it meant team assignments. Alright, Haruka said as he looked over the room full of freshly graduated Genin, today is your first day as Genin, and as such, it's my duty to inform each of you of the teams you've been placed on as well, and if requested, your place in the class's final grade. Haruka said with a smirk, knowing from tradition that most would want to know. 
the class add in quiet excitement, many of them wanting to know if they manage to get in the top circle of Genin and hopefully get a better teacher for the next portion of their ninja careers. Now team 1 will be. Hiroka began, going down his list of people on the clipboard in front of him. Time passed slowly as the first six teams were called out and many people requesting their scores, some earning a little embarrassment, while others swelled with pride as they found themselves in the top 10. Team 7, Iruka began again as he smiled, seeing the names, Sasuke Ichiha, Naruto Senju and Hinata. Iruka said, his smile sliding slightly as he noticed that Hinata's name lacked a Hayuga. Wide. Many people turned to Ino and Sakura as their yell nearly shattered glass, Sensei. Why does she get to be on Sasuke's team? She didn't even come to the exams. Ino shouted. Sakura nodded in agreement as she looked around the room, unable to recognize Hinata from her place next to Naruto in the back row, where is she anyway? Sakura asked, wanting something to spend her anger on. Iruka sighed in exasperation, but Sasuke managed to grab everyone's attention as he spoke, Sensei, my ranking. He asked with no discernible emotion on his face or in his voice. Iruka's face moved into a slightly nervous smile, Sasuke, well you came. Second. Iruka said. The class was quiet at that for a moment as Sasuke turned and glared across the classroom at Naruto, who was looking curiously at Iruka, since he was supposed to be listening, who came first? Sasuke demanded. Iruka scratched the back of his head, now the person who came first hasn't asked for their score to be read out Sasuke, I can't give that information away so easily. Iruka said apologetically. Naruto stood as he looked around, not knowing where Sasuke's usual spot was since he was new, hey Sasuke, wanna come sit with Hinata and me? Naruto asked with a smile once he spotted Sasuke. Sasuke's glare withered as it seemed to have literally no impact on Naruto, either he thinks he's better than me or he's actually glad we're on a team. Sasuke thought before he realized something. He had already stood and begun walking. Sasuke came to a stop at the desk before taking a seat in the empty chair next to Hinata, leaning back as he rested his feet on the table to look up at the roof. Though he was trying to act casual, he was trying to think of a way to find out if Naruto was the one to have beaten him. Ah no, Haruka sensei What was my score? Everyone in the class turned to the hooded figure between Sasuke and Naruto, as Hinata looked up from resting her head on her crossed arms. The class was mostly silent as almost no one realized who it was. Haruka smiled sadly up at Hinata, sorry Hinata, because of the circumstances of your passing, you didn't actually get a passing grade, so unfortunately you got the lowest score of the class. Haruka said. Sakura seemed to pounce on the opportunity to make her seem better than Hinata, ha. Huh? Stupid dead last. She said as she pointed at Hinata. Sakura. The class was quiet again as Sakura turned to Sasuke with wide eyes, H he's addressing me. Just me. Sakura thought with a dreamy smile. Talk to my team like that again and I'll burn you. Rather than letting the classroom explode again, Hiruka quickly clapped his hands to get everyone's attention as Sakura froze, an emotional breakdown becoming more and more imminent with each passing second, so Naruto, want to know your ranking. Haruka asked before realizing that this redirect might not have been his best. Naruto smiled and nodded, okay, did I get in the top 10? Naruto asked politely. Haruka nodded, yes actually, turns out you got number 1, he said, letting that sink in for a moment, Naruto is rookie of the year. As if that was the last straw, everyone in the classroom burst into questions. How Sasuke was beaten, how Hinata had passed, how Naruto got number one after only a week in the academy, even though Aruka clearly said that, that the final grade was reliant solely on the final exams. Aruka sighed as he looked around the classroom, realizing he had lost complete control over the kids that bombarded the silent Sasuke and Hinata, with questions as Naruto tried to answer them all, realizing his teammates didn't want to, oh screw it. I only really had to inform them of the teams and scores. Haruka thought with a sigh as he turned to his blackboard and picked up a piece of chalk. A few minutes after he began writing, he placed the chalk down and came to the realization that the room was mostly quiet behind him. Turning around, Haruka raised a brow as he noticed three things. 1. Every girl was glaring between Hinata and Sasuke, 2. Shino seemed to be the only one in the room standing and 3. Almost everyone in the room seemed to have more than just a few bugs on their faces. Aruka blinked as Shino brought a single finger to his lips, shhh. He whispered gently. Aruka merely blinked again before a knock was heard on the door, and a group of jonin walked in, team one, with me. A sickly looking jonin said before walking back out the door. As the next few teams began to leave, Ino looked up at the board to see that Aruka had written the last few teams up, as well as their sensei, I'm stuck with Fadis and the lazy bum. She shouted. Shikamaru and Choji sighed as Shikamaru turned to his friend, told ya she wouldn't have noticed it before. Shikamaru muttered. 
Mino's outburst made Sakura look up for her name, as well before a horrified look came over her face, I got the stinky dog and bug boy. She screamed. Sakura. The pin cat turned to Shino as the boy readjusted his glasses, giving Sakura a view of his kaleidoscope eyes, sit down. Shino ordered. Sakura girl with an extreme fear of bugs sat down quickly and silently, as anime tears poured from her face. Naruto nodded as he read from the board as well, interesting, so the person who came last gets put with the two best to balance a team, and the same repeats throughout the top 10, and subsequently the worst 5 before the last 15 are mixed around in subsidized groups. Naruto said calmly. Inada and Sasuke both looked at him with a raised brow. Plunk. The three of them looked over to the door in unison to come to the same conclusion as they were left behind in the now empty room, our sensei is late. Soon a day sighed as she entered her new office in the hospital. After only half a week of work at the hospital, it was obvious that the standards of medical care had fallen in the few years she was absent, and as she began to prove so, she proved that she was still more than capable of running the ICU department. So here she was, just over a week into her job as one of the three alternating head doctors of the ICU unit in the Hidden Leaf Village's hospital. And fuck was there a lot of idiots. Tsuna Day frowned as she fell into the plushy chair behind her desk, looking down at the folder of her last patient for the day, managing to ignite a fire chakra inside the lungs, but didn't release it, before it took form of a flame. Idiot burned the inside of his lungs and would have died if it wasn't for that weirdo genin medic. Tsuna Day thought before leaning back and closing her eyes for the moment. Long date Tsuna Day. Tsuna Day's eyes snapped open as she looked at the person standing in the corner of her office, Jureya. She asked in shock. The toad sage stepped out of the shadows with a grin on his face that was so big that his eyes were shut, that's me, sorry I missed the dinner the other night. Jureya said as he walked calmly into the center of the room. Tsuna Day sighed again as she sat forward, that was last week moron, you really messed up. She said. Jureya raised a brow, huh? Why did I mess up? Jureya asked. Tsuna Day looked up at Jureya with an angry but obviously exhausted glare, cause on that night Siratobi and I had a little talk concerning who Naruto's godparents were, and since Makoto is gone, that left only his godfather there to look after him, Tsuna Day said as she stood to her feet, her hands clenched tightly, but where was he again? Oh yeah, writing porn for money. Tsuna Day said angrily as she punched through her desk in anger, breaking it in half, and clearing a path for her to walk through. Jureya blinked with wide eyes as he stepped back, H hey let me explain here. It wasn't my fault. Saratobi sensei said that Naruto can't leave the village yet, and then I had to go set up my spy network throughout the elemental nations. Jureya said in panic. Tsuna Day scowled as she walked past Jureya, I know everything you really got up to Jureya, she said as she slapped him in the chest with a yellow envelope, and you have a lot to make up for. She said as she paused at his side. Jureya looked at the envelope in confusion as he begun to open it, only to find two columns named Penance and Crime side by side down the page, along with a paragraph down the bottom from their sensei. Jureya. I am ashamed that you shirked your duties as a godfather in favour of Ring on the women of the five elemental nations. You have oosed your status to get into places and do illegal activities. As much as I hate to do this it's the only way I can be certain about your actions at this point in time. For each crime that I could report you for, you shall do the village an effever specifically for people of this village or the village itself. If you refuse, pack your bags and start running. Looking forward to seeing you at the first task. Here is in Saratobi. Jureya was about to be stunned and furious as he read the paragraph to its final word, but before he could say anything out loud about it, soon a day cut him off, before you begin to bitch, look at the first few acts of penance and make your decision. She said, pointing to the first line of words and walking away. Jureya blinked owlishly as he read the first task, chill with the Hokage on the next available Saturday for his day off. Teach a team of Naruto clones weekly. Teach a three-lesson course that's full prep for. Female Jonin seduction missions Jureya read questioningly yet hopefully in his mind as blood began to leak from his nose. Tsuna Day nodded as she watched Jureya begin to get lost in his daydream, tapping him on the forehead protector to get his attention as she walked past, focus idiot, most of these aren't that bad, though a few will be time consuming, she said before opening the door back into the main part of the hospital, how about we go get started on number 4. Don't expect anything sincere you perv, and you're picking up the check. Tsuna Day said as she walked out the door. Jureya blinked as he looked down at number 4 on his list, take Tsuna Day out on at least 5 dates, whether it be as friends or something more, you both need to talk. Jureya read out loud. Jureya looked up and out the open doorway, seeing Tsuna Day looking at him with a blank expression, one that Jureya was familiar with. Dear Log, what has her this pained? It's not really about me ditching the kid is it? Rock. Paper. Scissors. Team 7 exclaimed as they thrust their hands out. Oh damn. 
Naruto said with a fake frown, having fun testing Hinata and Sasuke's reactions to his subtle mind analysis techniques, such as rock-paper-scissors. Sasuke smirked as he and Hinata turned to one another, both of them holding out their hands as Naruto tried to predict their movements, Sasuke will pick rock again, but this time Hinata will too. Then next turn Sasuke will go scissors, and Hinata will lose with paper. Naruto predicted, smirking as what he was guessing began to unfold in front of him. Naruto raised a brow as Hinata surprised him by picking rock a third time, Hinata wins. Naruto said with a grin. Sasuke scowled before leaning back and shrugging, big deal, it's just rock paper scissors. He grumbled. Preak. The three genin turned their heads in unison as the door to the classroom opened, letting a gray-haired jonin walk in, hello, team 7. Kakashi asked with an eye smile. Sasuke stood immediately, that's us. He said confidently. Kakashi looked him up and down before pointing at Sasuke, to emo, he said before his finger pointed at Hinata, to blind, he said before pointing at Naruto too. Ugly. Kakashi said calmly before turning away, meet you on the rooftop. Poof. It took a few moments for Kakashi's words to register in their minds, but when they did, Naruto jumped to his feet angrily, hey what the hell Naruto shouted before leaping to the door of the classroom, turning back to his team with a grin, race you up there. He said before stepping out of the door. Naruto chuckled as he instantly heard the two people behind him get to their feet, so the key for this team is to give Sasuke a challenge to spur him on to be stronger, and to give Hinata the opportunity to prove herself, now that she's stopped holding herself back, I wonder how strong she'll grow without the oppression of her clan hanging over her. Naruto thought to himself as he dashed up the stairs. Pushing open the doors to the rooftop, Naruto paused as he spotted their new sensei sitting on the rail opposite him. A second or so later, Sasuke and Hinata stopped at his sides, staring at Kakashi as he opened his single eye, ah, hello you three, come take a seat. Kakashi said, waving them over casually. Naruto frowned as he marched over to Kakashi, I don't know what's up with this guy, but as long as I can get these two to have a friendly rivalry between them, they'll grow strong together and hopefully help me to do the same. Naruto thought as he arrived in front of their new sensei, taking a seat to Sasuke's left as Hinata sat beside him. Kakashi glanced over the group with a bored expression in his eye before it rested on Hinata, so, tell me a little about yourselves guys. Hinata blinked, um, what should I say? She asked. Kakashi shrugged, you know the usual, your names, likes, dislikes, dreams and stuff. Kakashi explained. Naruto cut in, wanting to know more about their sensei, why don't you show us how it's done sensei? Kakashi held his chin and thought as he looked up at the sky, well, let's see. My name is Kakashi Haddock, I like some things and dislike other things. Yeah. He muttered before pointing at Hinata, your go. Hinata blinked behind her headband, casually taking a glance of Sasuke and Naruto's expression simultaneously as they focused on her, my name is Hinata of the Leaf, I like the chance that I've been given by being expelled from the Hyuga clan. I dislike the harsh practice of clan separation, my dream. Is to save my sister and everyone else from the horror that the main branch. And. Um, Hinata paused as she realized she didn't know what to say, and I want to have a real family with someone. She said, not even realizing her words until they were out before she looked down sadly. Akashi blinked at Hinata's introduction, ah Katie, this is interesting, when did she leave the Hyuga? He thought before glancing at the next in line, Naruto, okay blondie, you're up. Naruto smiled, my name is Naruto Senju, I like the new friends I've made in Konoha and helping those that I can, and my team and my family. Naruto said, his smile becoming a grin, I like basically this village in general, so my dislikes. Naruto said as he tilted his head in thought, I guess. Violence really. I don't like people I care about getting hurt, even if that means I have to hurt someone else to keep my friends from pain. Naruto said before scratching the back of his head, but I don't really know what my dream is yet, I guess right now, it's to help me and my teammates grow stronger together. Naruto said happily. Bakashi I smiled at Naruto, for the first time. Here's a kid that I actually want to teach, and after only a few sentences too. Kakashi thought happily before turning to Sasuke and last, but in no way least. Sasuke glanced at Kakashi before looking down at his hands, I am Sasuke Ichiha, I don't like many things other than getting stronger, but I dislike many things that are constantly thrown in my way every day, Sasuke said, his glare hardening, and my dream is to rip out the heart of a certain man and make him watch it beat its last. He said darkly. The group was in a tense silence as Naruto looked down sadly, Itachi isn't the bad guy here. If only there was a way I could clear his name. Naruto thought, hoping beyond hope that somehow he was right about Itachi. Kakashi scratched the back of his head, hmm. I think I know a pretty good technique for that. Kakashi mumbled casually before looking back at the trio who were staring at him intently, right, so I want you all to meet me tomorrow morning for your final test alright. 
You guys know where Training Ground 7 is? Kakashi asked as he stood up and yawned in apparent boredom. Naruto shook his head, nope and what test? He asked. Kakashi I smiled at the blonde, well get help from your friends, and this test truly decides whether you get to become part of a genin cell and take missions or not. Kakashi said. Hanada frowned, I know where Training Ground 7 is. Do you? She trailed off as she looked up, glancing between the two boys that were staring at her, want to meet up in the morning? She asked. Naruto nodded, yeah. There's this Raymond place down in the market district and. No breakfast tomorrow, Kakashi said, cutting him off, you'll just end up throwing it up again. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Sasuke frowned and then sighed, how about the gates to the Ichiha district? My clan house is right next to the edge of the village in the training grounds. Sasuke said with with a bored expression. Naruto nodded again with a smile, yeah that seems cool to me. Naruto said before looking to Hinata, wanting her to speak up. Hinata nodded at his look and smiled, yes. The Ichiha district sounds fine. She said, though she was wondering if Naruto had forgotten that they now live together. Kakashi chuckled as he watched the group before performing a one-handed tiger seal, well, I'll see you guys in the morning then, Jana. Kakashi said with an eye smile and a wave. Poof. Naruto and the others blinked in shock as the smoke dissipated, was he a clone? Naruto asked. Hinata shook her head, his chakra signature was here, and he was solid. She said, causing Naruto to smirk. The two paused and turned as they saw the door close, Sasuke's head disappearing from view through the small window. Naruto blinked in confusion at Sasuke's abrupt departure, but Hinata quickly grasped his attention with her next words, so, Naruto. Did you? She began, seeing Naruto raise an eyebrow at her expectantly, causing her to blush in embarrassment, w want to go down to the market district? For some um, Raymond. She asked nervously, never having asked a friend out before, she looked off to the side nervously as she twiddled her fingers. Naruto smiled simply, happy that someone wanted to do something with him, this is what friends must be like. Naruto thought with a smile, before speaking yes ma'am. Wanna take a shortcut? Naruto asked as he jogged up to and stood next to the railing overlooking the edge of the building. Hinata sighed in relief even as she giggled at Naruto's words, stepping up beside him before looking down and frowning, um, I don't think we should jump from here. Hinata said softly. Naruto surprised her by grabbing her hand and pulling her into an awkward hug as he formed a ram seal behind her back, stay close. Naruto exclaimed as the two of them disappeared in a shunshin. That's it for today guys, hope you all are enjoyed this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, also don't forget to check it out others video you might find interesting. So do check it out. Thanks for watching.